We have two counting problems this month, and the strategy in both is the same. Count everything once, and only once. Start right here. The First National Bank of Zizzlevaria requires each customer to choose a code comprising of four distinct. Distinct, that means different. We're going to underline it because that's a sneaky word. You always underline the sneaky words. Distinct digits from one to five. Inclusive, another sneaky word. You got to remember that. It means we can include the one and the five, where the positive difference between any two consecutive digits must be at least two. How many such codes can we make? When I start to get used to the problem, I'm going to forget about this restriction for just a minute. And four distinct digits from one to five focus on one, one restriction at a time. If we just had that restriction, you'd have five choices for the first digit, four for the second, three for the next, two for the last one, five times four times three times two. That's 120 codes. That's a lot of codes. But this restriction's pretty tight. This, the difference between any two consecutive digits has to be at least two. That means you can't start off four, three. You can't have one, two in the middle. You can't have five, four at the end. This is going to knock out a whole lot of possible codes. There aren't going to be many left. And I don't see a particularly clever way to count these. But I don't think there are going to be that many of them. So I'm going to try to list them. That sounds a little nuts, but well, if you're going to take this strategy, you go on this strategy, this is where the whole once and only once gets really important. If you're going to list them all out, you have to have a strategy to do that nice and organized so you make sure you hit everything. That's the once part. But you got to make sure you don't list anything twice. That's the only once part. So nice and organized. We're going to get organized by the first digit. We're going to look at all the ones that start with one, then all the ones that start with two, and so on. Be nice and organized while we look for them. So we start with one. We can't go one and then two, but we can go one and then three, or one and then four, or one and then five. Now if we start off one, three, can't put a two or four next because it's too close to three, we have to go one, three, five. Can't put a four after that, but I can put a two there, and those are the only two choices left. Then I'm going to 1, 4. Well, if I start off 1, 4, I have 2, 3, and 5 left, but I can't put a 3 or a 5 after the 4. So I start off 1, 4, 2. I only have 3 and 5 remaining, but I can't put a 3 next to the 2. 1, 4, 2, 5. That's the only one that starts off 1, 4. Now, if I start off 1, 5, I can put a 2 next, or I can put a 3 next. Now, if I put a 2 there, I have 3 or 4 left, but I can't put a 3 next to the 2, so I have to put a 4 there. If I start off 1, 5, 3, I only have two and four left, and I can't put those next to the three, so we can't do that. And these are the only possibilities that start with one. You know what? We can use these to find the possibilities that start with five. We can use symmetry here. Symmetry, very powerful in counting problems. Here we started off with the lowest number, one. But what if we started off with the highest number? And every time we have the number that's the second lowest, the two, well, what if we replace that with the number that's the second highest? Replace the twos with the fours. The number in the middle stays in the middle. And the number that's the second highest, replace it with the second lowest. Replace all the fours with twos. And replace all the fives with ones. All right, so here, instead of starting from the lowest number, we want to start from the highest. Start with the highest. Five. The number in the middle stays the number in the middle. The number that's the highest, instead of the number that's the highest, start with the, put in the number that's the lowest. The number that's the second lowest, replace that with the number that's the second highest. And you get another code. This one's perfectly valid. We can do the same thing here. Replace the 1 with a 5, replace a 4 with a 2, replace the 2 with a 4, replace the 5 with a 1. Replace 1 with a 5, replace the 5 with a 1, replace the 2 with a 4, replace a 4 with a 2. Boom, and there are all my codes that start with 5. And we've used symmetry to knock off the case of starting with 5. So now let's look at what happens when we start with 2. And of course, while we're tackling the case of starting with 2, we're also tackling the case of starting with 4. Now, if we start with 2, we can't put a 1 next. We can't put a 3 next. We only have two options. We start 2, 4, or we start 2, 5. Now, if we start 2, 4, we can't put a 3 after that. We can't put a 5 after that. The only option is 2, 4, 1. Once we started 2, 4, 1, well, we can put a 3 or a 5 after that. So we've got 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5. Now, if I start 2, 5, I can put the 1 or the 3 after that. I can't put the 4 right after the 5, but I can go 2, 5, 1, or 2, 5, 3. If I start 2, 5, 1, 
I can put the three after that. Or I can put the four after that. If I start two, five, three, I can't put the four after that, but I can put the one after that. So now I have five more solutions there. And I can do the same thing I did up here, use our symmetry to get the five solutions to start with. Four, four, two, five, three, four, two, five, one. Place the two with the four, place the five with the one, one with the five, and three stays three. Four, one, five, two, four, one, three, five. And practice on the contest. You're not going to bother listing all these here. You're going to see these five and say, hey, there are five more to start with four. They're right there, but now we've got 16 total, and all we have left is to think about the ones to start with three. So if we start with three, now the options we go from there are to three, one, or three, five. You can't go three, two, or three, four, but from three, one, we can go three, one, four, or three, one, five. And if we start off three, one, four, well, you can't put the five after that, but you can put the two. If we start off 3, 1, 5, you can put the 2 after that. If we start off 3, 5, we can go 3, 5, 1, or 3, 5, 2. If you start off 3, 5, 1, well, we can put the 4 after that, but not the 2. 3, 5, 2, we can't put the 1 after that, but we can put the 4 after that. And we've got 4 more. And we've been nice and organized here. So we know that we've got everything. We know that we've hit everything once. And our nice organized approach to building these makes it very obvious just at a glance that we haven't listed anything twice. That's the only one. So we've got everything once and only once, and we've got 20 codes sitting on the board. And we're ready for the next problem. Here we have four one centimeter cubes. We join them face to face in all possible ways to form geometric solids. And two of them are the same if I can rotate, spin in three dimensions, one and make it into the other. How many are possible? Well, four cubes is too many. I'm going to, well, one's obvious. You just have one way to do it. But what about two? We'll start, we'll start real easy. We'll start with two. And two, well, there's only one way to do that as well. That's pretty simple. You just take two of them, stick them together. So that wasn't very interesting. But it's a good way to start the problem. You know, make the problem a lot easier. Now, if we want to step up to three, how do you get three? Well, you can get to three by starting with two and sticking another cube on. So we're going to get to three by starting with this two and adding another cube. Now we're going to focus on all the ways we can add a cube to this piece right here. We can stick one right on the end. It's pretty clear. Or we can stick one down here, make this piece. Now if I stuck one on top, then I could just spin this down and make this piece again. So that wouldn't be a new one. If I put it up here, well then I could rotate it around, boom, and make this piece again. If I put it in back, I could flip it forward and get that again. So. Just get those two. Now I have to look at all the ways I could add a cube over here. I could stick it on the end. I'd get that one again. I could stick it down here, but if I stuck it down here, I could just take this piece and spin it. I'd have that one again. If I put it on top, I could rotate it down and spin it and get that one. If I put it up top, I could just spin it around and get that one again. Same thing if I put it on the back. Flip it forward, spin it around and get that one again. So these are the only two possible pieces that I can make out of three cubes. Now we're ready to go after four, and we're going to go after four kind of the same way we went after three. We found these two pieces for three, and we're confident that there are no more by thinking of all the possible ways I could add a cube to our one, two cube configuration. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to think about all the ways I can take one extra cube and add it to one of these three cube configurations. So we have to think about every single possibility. That's the once part. And we have to make sure we don't hit anything twice. That's the only once part. So we're going to look at the ways we can add a cube to this cube right here. Of course, we can put it on the end, and we get this. And now I got you thinking about Tetris. Stick one on the end, we get the long skinny Tetris piece. I can stick it down here, and we'll get this Tetris piece right there. Now if I stick it on top so it's sticking out of the board, well then I can rotate it down and get that Tetris piece again. I can stick it up here, stick it up there, but then I can rotate it around. Because remember, we're in 3D now, these are cubes. Can rotate it around and get this piece again. I could stick it in back behind these three, but then I could just rotate it down and we get this piece again. So any of the four sides of this, the, the top, the bottom, the sticking out, sticking back, I'll get this piece right here. So now we're on thinking about what happens when we 
put another cube on the middle so I can get this Tetris piece. And if I stick the cube on top, I can rotate it down to get that. If I stick it pointing up, I can rotate it all the way around and get that one again, or I can stick it in the back and that'll rotate down and give you this one again as well. Got this piece out here. I can stick a cube on at the end and I'll get this long skinny one again. I already got that. What if I put it down here? If I put it down there, I get this Tetris piece. Now you know when you're playing Tetris and you're hoping for this and you get this when you're all bummed out, because in Tetris you can't rotate this into that. But Tetris is just 2D. You should try some 3D Tetris. It's pretty wild, but if we have 3D Tetris, we can bring this, we can rotate this up out of the board and flip it down and lay it down like that. In 3D, these two are the same. Because I can rotate this all the way around. Boom. Lay it flat over there. So if I put a cube there, I just get this piece back. If I put a cube up here sticking out of the board, I get this piece as well because, well, I rotate it down, then I flip it over. If I put a cube up here, well, I get this piece again. I can just rotate it around like that. If I stick a cube in the back, rotate it up, and then flip it over, and I get this again as well. So no matter where I tack on a cube onto this last piece here, I get one of these ones that I already have. That's the only ones part. So we have to only count each one of these once. Now I've taken care of all the possible ways to add a cube to this. I'm going to add a cube to this guy over here. We'll start by thinking about all the possible ways to add to this bottom cube. The first one is just to put a piece down here. Of course that gives us this piece again if you put it down here. I could put a piece over here and it gives you the old Tetris block. I can put a piece over here and there's another new Tetris piece. Now, that takes care of these three places to put the cube, but what if I stick the cube right on top? Now we're having to think a little bit in 3D. This is a little bit trickier. I'm going to try to draw it. I'm not very good at this. But I think you'll be able to see it. This right here is the 3D piece we're dealing with, right? The, the, three, the three cube piece. And we're going to add a piece right here. And this is very much a 3D piece. This is three-dimensional. We can't lay this thing flat. We can lay all these flat. We can't lay this one flat. So this is definitely not the same as any of these. In fact, I'm going to cheat a little bit. i got a model right there. Start with the three on the bottom. Stuck one on top. That's this piece right here. But what happens if I stick this cube on the bottom instead? Put it on the bottom, the back of this. Do I get the same thing as this? That's a little tricky. I'm going to I'll try to draw it right here. If I did this instead, I start with my three cube piece, start with my three cube piece, and then add to the bottom. Is this the same as that? Can I start with this and spin it in some way and make that? Well, now if I look at that, you know, here on the top there, we've got this, these three cubes that are in this nice little three cube formation with two of them sticking out towards you, and then I got this one pointing down, not up. So now i got to think, can I rotate this to make that? Well, I think of all the ways I can make it so that I've got these three sitting on the bottom with the two pointing out at you. Well, there's one way. There's only one other way to do it, and that's to rotate so that these three are on the bottom. And still, this is pointing up, not down. It's not, and, but these two are still sticking out at you. There's only two ways to rotate this so that I've got three sitting on the bottom like this. And this is always pointing up over here. These two, not the same. These two are different. And I have a special word for how these two are related. I got this one here, this one over here with this pointing down. If I flip this over, this cube would be pointing up, but it'd be over here. Over here. And it would be the mirror image of this. So it would be like if I had a mirror here, flipped it over there, so that this would then be over on this side. But I can't rotate this into that or I'd show it to you. But you can't do it, it's impossible. Those two are not the same, they are chiral. Kind of like your hands. No matter what you do with righty over here, you can't make it lefty. Now, if I make the thumbs match up, well, now it's the back that's pointing out instead of the front. Not the same. Hands are different. They're chiral. They're mirror images, but they're not the same. And that's what's going on here. These two, they're chiral. I can't spin this into that. They're different. Now we're ready to go. We've thought about all the ways to add one on here. We're ready to think about adding one on here. If I add there or there, I get that piece. If I stick it right on top, I get something new. Another 3D piece that we haven't seen yet. 
So there's the three cube piece that we started with. And I add one right on top. Right on top. And we get this 3D piece. That's new. And if I added it in the back, I'd get this same piece. You know, if I added this to the bottom, you just flip it over, you get this one here. And you get uh, it sticking up to the top. So that would not be a new piece. So that's a new piece. Now finally think about all the ways to add to this out here. If I add down there, I get that cube. If I add right there, I get this piece. If I add up here, I get this Tetris piece. Now of course in Tetris, these two pieces are not the same, right? In Tetris, you rotate this around, you're all excited, you think you got the piece you wanted, but no, you've got this piece right here. And in Tetris, these two pieces are not the same. That's 2D. Or in 3D land, we flip this over, boom, we flip this one over, come out of the board, flip it over, you get that one. These are the same in 3D. So that's not a new piece. So that covers adding here, here, or here. What if we stick it sticking out of the page? We've seen that one already. That's this one right here. If I flip this over, it'll have the three laying flat with two, with two pointing out at you and one cube sticking up over here. That's what we get when we put one on top. And if we put one on the bottom, in the back, pointing into the board, we get this piece, this piece, flipped over. Boom. That's what you get when you have these three and you stick one on the bottom there. So that's all the possibilities of adding a cube to that. And now we've taken care of once, because we've thought of every possible way to add a cube to any of these, and the only ones we've made sure that no two of these are the same. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible solids. And again, the key, when you're going to go through some casework, start listing stuff out. Count everything once, and only once.